Welcome to Your Brand Express Podcast. I'm your host, CJ Aline. And I'm Carl Aline. And together, we will take you on a journey to where entrepreneurship meets culture and cool. So get ready to elevate and expand your entrepreneurial spirit as we explore the dynamic and ever-changing landscape of the business world. So sit back, relax, and join us as we bring to you the ultimate vibe and help you experience your brand like never before. Let's get it. Woo! All right, all right, all right, everyone. We're hanging out. We're hanging out with some folks, our peoples from the Center of Teen Empowerment. Um, and I'm excited because it's almost showtime, and we're going to get into that a little bit more. We're hanging out with Hassan and Miko. Am I saying that right? Sure. Right Come on. on. Here. <laughs> Going on. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Oh, man, I tell you, we're excited to meet with you guys and um, just hear about what you got going on. You guys are a powerful organization in the in the Boston area. And I know that this is an event that you, that's taking place next week. Sense of Smoke, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. And it's the, not it's not just Sense of Smoke. It's the it's the live, the live, the live version, version. Right. live version. Let's go. Awesome. Put together by the youth, you know, for the youth of today, still relevant, something new. Love it. That's tight. And that's tight. Well, CJ, why don't you get right into it? Yeah. Um, you know, I wanted to know because I was actually, um, funny story, I was uh, a cast member of the movie. I got jumped. I don't want to talk about my role too much. <laughs> but uh I was in the movie and I wanted to know um what's the difference? What 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 was the thought process in going in from the movie to like the live and play action? Uh, I can answer that. It was really like, I would say that it was a yearly process. It took some time for us to even like think about what we wanted to do. Yeah. We had um a small little like built off organization, which was called Yak. And it was just youth coming together, talking about how we would want to switch from the movie to the live action. And we really wanted it to like have a, backstory you want everybody to understand what was going on in the movie basically so that's why once you see the live action you gonna understand like what i'm saying because it's like there's more to this there's more to just like um the main characters it's a whole bunch that's dope yeah to add on to that plus it's new and like i was talking to one of my supervisors earlier that this whole play production it's pretty much new for all the youth, if I'm not wrong, you know? So it's like, it's like a lot of their first time actually being on a live stage, performing and doing everything. So I'm excited for them, <laughs> facts. Nice. That's man, awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm like, man, Miko, y'all gonna make us wait, huh? You're not gonna give us any, <laughs> any juicy details. All right, yeah, I respect that. We respect <laughs> that, we respect that. Well, can you share some insights like into the creative process? Like, what was that like? Um, I would say for me, it was very exciting only because once we was like, I actually was going through my notes the other day and I had found like the paper of the notes of what we was writing about. And it's crazy because it's like everybody there didn't really understand the movie completely because it was just one time we watched it. But everybody was like flowing, flowing, flowing. Like, Miss G, I can say like some of the notes that we had because none of that. So it was like, oh, Miss G should get shot or something like this. Like they wanted action. We wanted more because we feel like definitely this is something that goes on in the community and this is something that has to be spoken about. So we got to really understand and come to like my like my level. You feel me? Like a youth level. Like how are we gonna look at this differently? So that's really where we're coming. Wow. And I know for like the music wise, because the music director can't come over, but he had told me like they were thinking about like what does say it looked like what does like say the street code look like what does certain things look like and they had like a whole conversation process and then he said everyone in the music group all took part in writing each other's verses so like each person would write their verse or say it to the group and of the group like all right let's critique it here let's critique it there you know so each person has 
had a hand in writing everyone's verses. So it's not just like one person, but each person wow. had a chance of like editing that. And they all did it as a collective. So like the whole music that you'll hear in the live performance was put together by our youth. You know, they wrote that. We, as the facilitators, did not do that. That's all of them, 110% them. That's tight. Wow. That's powerful, man. Y'all went you know? in, like the creative process. I see, like even when Nico was speaking, he just like, you could tell this is like well thought of. It's like years, uh, like time just thought in. Mm -hmm. so, that's tight. Right. Cool. And Miko, you just ask. came in. Oh, go ahead. So you're gonna use you Miko. You just came in from doing some work from the from for props, right? You just yeah, you step. You literally step into this interview from <laughs> doing props, right? Yeah. Man, you guys are. I love the process. That's the stuff. Let's see. I was gonna he's... ask like, um. Oh, what were you saying? My bad. No, you're good. I was just gonna say he's dope. This this boy right here is an artist. So like, he was just like, I love doing this. So I'm gonna go do this. He was like, What? You're spray painting outside? <laughs> go outside and go spray paint real quick you know <laughs> so he was like shoot i'm like listen but we got the podcast at 3 30 he said i'll be there nice man. shout out nico man shout yeah, out yeah i was gonna ask y'all like what was um uh, how does like the movie because you mentioned like they talk about uh different senses like different uh points of action you guys are emphasizing action how does um the movie or the the live performance address kind of like the violence and like the conflict in the community and like how do you think what do you want the audience to take away from those scenes um i would personally say from just the live performance there's a lot of things that like you could look at and be like damn i could connect this to like my man's my best friend that's one thing you could easily like look at this any scene, anything that you're watching, and easily like connect it to something that's going on. Right? And I think that's the most important part, only because you're um <laughs> you're connecting it to things that's going on around you. You're really like seeing, wow, like, this isn't just some like play. This isn't some movie. This is like, bro, or it could even be like the person sitting next to you, like, bro, you be doing this. Like, you could be laughing about it, but really be like, this is real. And I yeah. think that should be the takeaway. Like, what's going on around us isn't okay. And we got to, like, break the norm that we have going on now. And we got to fix from there. You're right. To, pay, to piggyback off that, it's like practically everything that's going on in this play is practically, in a sense, based here in Boston. You know, from the stuff that we see around us that from a lot of us grew up with. You know, if people was... was in a gang or not. Like, I feel like everybody in Boston has known at least one or two people that has been affiliated or has gone through all of this, you know? So, like, just seeing it in live action is like, whoa. And, like, a major difference between live action and, like, movie is where it's, like, with the movie, you could get different shots. You know, you get a close-up of the face, you get it, like, wide. You know, like, that's that's the main difference where as a play, it's, like, it's a continuous run-through, you know? So it's, like, it's, like, they see everything. Everyone in the audience sees everything from your movement to your facial expressions to the, the sound of your voice. Whereas you can edit that, but you can't edit a live performance, you know? So, right. So, 100% real and authentic. That's right. Woo. We're in for a treat, man. I tell you. Yeah, I'll tell you, man. Like, I, it's, it's cool because, I mean, me, us being from Boston, you know, it kind of like that resonates. I, I love the message you guys are doing throughout the whole sense of smoke theme but even to see part two i don't know nothing about it yet and i'm just excited like i can't wait like to tap in what y'all been cooking yeah. since you said you was in the movie like man, we i was in i was in the uh the movie but like it, they kind of they threw me in like, <laughs> like last week because one dude got sick so i was like the the person that stepped into like the role but no no i saw the movie you guys are just live playing it or is like yeah so oh, okay I would say what? Damn it, everything that's in that movie is in like in the play. It's in the play, that's except for there's some parts that's like a little tweak. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's yeah. like a little you know, the little tweakers and everything, you know, almost like a book. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Movie. Like, you know, book and movie, how like there's yes. something that like gets tweaked and like adjusted, but okay, cool. You know mm. what? Well they here. Mm. <laughs> that's so cool, man. I got a question. So here, this is an interesting question. Like, what? And this is a—it's kind of a hard question because it, it, I'm pretty sure you guys experienced so much going through it now, and now it's you know showtime's almost here. My question is, what has been the most impactful aspect 
of working on Sense of Smoke for each of you personally? Hmm. Like the most impactful. You, you might not even be able to pick one. I don't know. Most impactful? I'll, I'll say for me, it's, it's just, it's seeing like, I was, mm, okay, I got one where it's like, I think it's like the work that the youth is putting in. Cause I know right before we started, I was mentioning like, you know, I've worked on my own production, you know, I've done certain stuff. So seeing like the work that the youth have been putting in has been impactful because it's like, and I was, that's why I was like, I don't know how they understand how excited I am for them for like, when you, when you're doing it, when you're up there, it's like, it's different. You know, you feel, you feel good. And it's like the certain reaction that you get from the crowd helps you move forward. You know, it like it boosts you up. And then once you go backstage, you know, you people are like, yo, yeah, I was dope. You know, now it's like, you're even more ready, you know? And then it's like having more than one show, you, you, it's like, you realize what you do wrong that first show. Then it's like each show gets better. Cause it's like, it gives you that chance to do better. So it's just like seeing them come in practice, man. Oh, I tell you that we did our first rehearsal, like full run through last week. And one of them was like singing, and I had like I damn it, I shed a tear. I was like, damn, wow. that was. I was like, that was good. Like I'm not even. I'm like, I can't even sit there. I was like, yo, I got goosebumps because it's just like one is like you. It relates. It two like it hits. You know, and it was just one of those things. Like for me, growing up in Roxbury, you know, I seen a lot growing up. So it's just like just seeing that, and it seemed like I was still impacting our youth today. You know, that's the change that we that they trying to make. So just the work that they've been putting in. That's major. That's major. That's dope. Mm. Mm. Powerful, I definitely got to say most impactful right now is just all the work, exactly what he said. It's like all the work I've been seeing us put in. And then me, I'm a visual thinker. Since I'm an artist, I like to think big. I'm thinking about the future. I'm not thinking about right now. For me, I already got my, I embody my character. Yes, I know who I am. I want to be on that stage. Like, that's what I'm looking for. I'm so excited to see all my people on that stage. So excited to, like, just completely, like, just do what we got to do and make it happen. I really mm. do believe that this is going to be something great. And I'm really excited to see change in Boston. Change is something that's very impactful. And it's scary. And it's, like, something that you got to work on. You got to push it. You got to really push that. If you want it, you don't get it. If you don't go get it, you don't want it. So I feel like, I don't know. That's something that's very like I drive for change mm -hmm. all the time. For me, anybody else, so it's very like thing that's not. Yeah, with some of the youth that say that they're like uncomfortable, I was like, you gotta be comfortable with being uncomfortable because that's how you evolve, you know. Right. That's how you become a better self, you know. Like that means that something is happening. As he said, change is happening, and then it's like that's how you be that's how you go from that caterpillar to the cocoon to the butterfly. Exactly. You know? mm. Can't grow it so, out. Exactly. Ooh. You know, it's a process right now. A lot of them are in their cocoon, but I feel like once that show comes, <laughs> they they about to be, yo, yeah. I'm I'm pumped for them. Yeah, I'm pumped for them. You know, it's it's I appreciate what you all both said, Miko and, and Hassan. And then Hassan, what you mentioned earlier, like when you're in the like I have a background with the arts too, like doing live stuff and on camera stuff. Mm -hmm. and actually it's funny with Robin and Sherry, I did <laughs> my old singing group when I was a, when I was a teenager did work with Robin <laughs> and Sherry. So shout out to Robin and Sherry. You mm -hmm. know, but when you're in the moment on stage in front of the crowd, and this is a good metaphor for life, you're going to hear things that you will only hear in that moment and you'll never hear it again. It's not exactly like that specific moment. And that's mm -hmm. so deep because that that that's such a great metaphor for life in general. Like not to take for granted the things that come your way because what we see today we ain't gonna see again the same exact way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when someone, when someone, Miko, someone says a line, right? For example, and then someone's someone's mama or 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 a cousin of someone or or a friend of someone in the crowd says, Hey, that's so and so. They'll they'll never <laughs> hear it like that again. Although that'll be a funny moment, right? But that's a special moment and that gets ingrained mm -hmm. in the memory, ingrained in the motion. You know what I mean? So I love as far as with humans in general and in human behavior, I love stuff like that because it's so important. And these are the things that help us to develop and grow. Like you mentioned as well, Hassan, they're going to, you guys will come out of your cocoon and that's going to be part of the experience. So I'm excited for you guys. And then yeah. Miko, you mentioned too about the whole feeling uncomfortable, right? Yeah. They're going to, I'm pretty sure they're going to be people in the crowd. That's going to feel 
uncomfortable. There'll be certain things that's going to hit home, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in unique and different ways. So it's such a great experience for everyone, the the actors, the the the, the producers, the audience, you know, everyone in there. So I, I, I we're going to be there, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. We're going to be there. And we look forward to the to this. I'm going to call it an experience. We look forward to this experience. That's exactly what it is. It's experience. Mm -hmm. Cause I've never worked on a production like this in more of like the background kind of sense, you know. Right. I've, I've always enjoyed being like in front of like the camera, you know, and I've always wanted to do like the theater and stuff. So just like seeing it, the process for them has just been a dope experience. Yo. Mm. I've been sitting, I've been sitting there while they're doing their theater rehearsal. I'm like, yo, this is dope. I'm like, okay, so instead of doing this, how about this? Okay, word. Now make it your own. How can you make it your own? Like, you know? And yeah, it's been lit. This has been so dope. Let's go. Nice. Let's go. Yeah, you about to see this guy on, on the stage. He, he, that, over there. he got like a charisma to you, bro. I feel like you about to kill it. You do. Yo. You already do. He know. He knows it too. He's like, he yeah. knows. <laughs> you know, when the artist, Hassan, when yeah. the artist goes, yeah, you know they got a charisma <laughs> about it, man. You know it. They ain't got to say a word either. <laughs> <laughs> right, yo, listen, I'm trying to tell you, I see him coming. I said, heard, okay, okay, yeah, okay. hey, feel it, bro, <laughs> totally. <laughs> mm. CJ, got mm -hmm. another question? Yeah, uh, I got one more question for y'all. Like, so I know, I know one of the big themes in Sense of Smoke, um, is like accountability and responsibility for like actions and stuff like that. Um, how do you how do you guys plan on like engaging the crowd and communi communicating that right there? Like how you guys expect ex uh, expect to communicate that? Um, this is exactly why it's a live performance. There's gonna be more than just like a play. You know, for me, just like you said, music. We gonna make sure that there's spoken word. We're gonna make sure that there's talk back. There's gonna be more than just like you watching us. We wanna make sure that you're completely engaged in what's going on. Like mm -hmm. I don't want nobody lily gallying in the in the crowd. Like if I ask you a question, you gotta answer. That's really what we're trying to do. Cause we really want you to like, you feel me? I'm talking to you about something that's very serious. So you gotta fully understand there's gonna be spoken word about what's going on, there's gonna be spoken word about certain questions. It's like a lot. No, and the I think I'm very much myself when I talk to people trying to emphasize it, like this is not this is more than just like a play. This is like the youth showing and telling us like this is what's going on in their community and they want to see change for themselves. Right. Just because like we as adults now grew up with it don't mean that our youth have to go through the same process. Like why do we have to go through the same like why does it have to be a continuous cycle? You know, where can that cycle end and how can we make that change? But you know. A lot of people like I went through is they gotta go through it. No, it don't gotta be like that. You know, they're tired of it. You know, they wanna be able to go chill at the park and not have to worry about if they're gonna be able to go home to their mom that night. You get what I'm saying? They wanna be able to go to the park and play hoops or go play football and not have to worry about if just because I another dude from a different neighborhood that something's gonna get popped off, you know. So like it's more than that. It's more of a like as he said, like, we have the talk back. So there's the questions like, yo, are we engaged? Do you guys really understand that message that we're trying to convey to you guys? Do you guys really hear us? You know, like yeah. us as youth, do you guys hear us? And from like youth to youth, like me, me and you the same age, but do you hear my own frustrations with what's going on in our community? You know, like in Boston, that's why they change. That's why they try and change it up, gentrification, because like they see one thing going on. They gonna move us out, but it's like we can make our own change ourselves within our community. They won't do that. You know what I'm saying? They're not gonna move people, bring 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 people in and then move us out because it's our neighborhood. We already doing that change for ourselves. You know, right? That's real. And that's real, and it's so important to be able to communicate that. And I and I think it's so cool that you're able to do it through the arts, and it's just a testament to how powerful the arts are, and and how important this message is to bring it out to our communities. And wow. Youth to youth, youth to adult, that communication in of itself. It's interesting because CJ, you, he's going to be doing a podcast on voices for the youth. You know, that's going to be the concept. And But there's, there's such a power in that when the youth can speak to the other youth and the youth can speak to the adult as well. It's a testament to how powerful the youth's voice is. So, I, man, I'm, I'm kind of walking away from this, part, this episode speechless, you know, being a dad, being a father and being a product of our our neighborhood right yeah um, 
Dude, I'm 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 blown away. I'm inspired. Um, I'm, I'm I'm excited about um the your, the production. I'm excited about the message, and I'm excited about the intention behind the production and what you guys are doing. Just everything you guys are doing, I'm excited about it. Dude, that's why I myself even joined Teen Empowerment because they have heavily involved with the community, you know. And then they promote that that youth to adult relationship because you know as a youth. Me and you, Carl, as, as youth, we probably didn't have that that voice, you know, the chance to voice ourselves to other adults, you know, but th that's what they're promoting. It's like now, like my, like me, as I'm realizing, you know, like y'all are in this front ground, like y'all, y'all are in it <laughs> and y'all are going to be facing the stuff that I'm dealing with soon. So like, how can I help you? So when you guys get to where I'm at, you know, you're comfortable. And then it's like, you could pass that on where it's like, you know what, like, the youth have that voice, you know, just promoting that voice that they should have a voice. You know, like what their voice and what they're saying matters, how they're feeling matters, their emotions matter, everything matters. You know, yeah, we're all human. Right. Everything matters, you know, so right. like we should be able to listen to you. Just because you're younger than me don't mean like you don't feel what you feel, you don't think what you think. How can right. now, the only thing I probably need to help you understand is how can you articulate that? Right. Yeah, you know? you're right on. You're right on with that, man. I mean, I mean, sheesh. And then on top of that, it's a superpower for sure. Mm -hmm. And it's it's multiplied as opposed to how it used to be back in the days. We didn't have the platforms we have now where we could speak to hundreds, thousands of people. We only exactly. speak to a few people at a time. But you guys, it's, it's a superpower that you have, man. And man, I'm excited, man. Excited. So, gentlemen, so if one wants to find out about this production and hopefully there's more tickets available, mm -hmm. where can one go? to show up and show out and check out the event. All right, feel me? So we on Instagram, we on TikTok, Ooh. we on Twitter. Ah. We follow us at Teen Empowerment. At Teen Empowerment. At Teen oh. Empowerment. Word. Let's go. Hey, uh, everyone. So. Feel me? Tickets, link in bio. Okay. Scan this QR code. If it's a visual, scan the QR code. If yeah. you also go to the Emerson website, the tickets are on sale there. The show is also being held at Paramount Theater in downtown. And I know everyone that's from Boston has seen that Paramount sign. Oh, yeah. That's exactly where we're going to be. <laughs> right there. And if, if, like, if they had no reason to go inside that building, this is the reason to step inside that building. That's the exact mm -hmm. reason. So we're going to be at Paramount Theater in downtown Boston. Friday, May 3rd, and Saturday, May 4th, 7.30 p.m. Tickets are available, but who knows? They may be gone by the end of the week. We got to shop soon. Gotta get yeah. on that sharp. Go to, yo. It is once, right once, the work, once work keeps going out, it's, it might be over. It's yeah. a wrap. It might be it's over. Your tickets. Yeah. So I'm saying, I was at a fashion show yesterday speaking up about it. People have been hitting me up all morning. So <laughs> it's a thing now. It's a yeah. movement. It's what promoting peace with the power of people going into the summertime. We got events coming all summer too. Awesome. So hey, a teen empowerment. Dude, let me show one more time for the people. One more time. Go for one it. One more time. Yeah. One more time. time. Yeah. Uh. You know, I got, got to. Like, we here. Boom. Hey, zoom, hey, real quick, zoom it in and zoom it out real quick. Mm, yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> woo, right there. Uh. Dang. Yo, yo. Yes. Yo. That's how you do you it. Got the good QR code. Yes, sir. Yeah. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, want to yes, do the sir. honors of me, CJ? There you have it. There you have it. There you Appreciate go. It, Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. And if you haven't already, please be so kind and give us a five-star review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And we'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.